watching Twin Tiers Evening News with Jeff Andrelonis and Alexa Olson. Now, from the Twin Tiers biggest broadcast news operation, WVTT proudly presents Twin Tiers Evening News. Good evening, I'm Alexa Olson. And I'm Jeff Andrelonis. Good evening. The big story tonight on Twin Tiers Evening News. It's the toughest gun control law in the nation, and it now sits on Governor Andrew Cuomo's desk, who surely will sign it. This New York uh, State Assembly just hours ago passed that tough gun control legislation after it passed the state Senate yesterday. Alexa? Well, Jeff, this gun control debate is definitely firing people up in the Twin Tiers. Let's go live to the WVTT Digital Newsroom, where WVTT's Valerie Tysaner is standing by with the latest. Valerie. Alexa, last night, state senators bridged the partisan gap to pass this bill 48 to 13, giving what some are saying is the toughest gun laws in the nation. Just minutes ago, the state assembly passed it as well. And uh, let's go ahead and see what the people are saying about it. No one needs 10 bullets to kill a deer. Just days after Governor Cuomo's fiery state of the state address calling for new measures for gun control, the state Senate passed New York safe. New York's Democrat held assembly took up Cuomo's bill early this morning. The bill cracks down on assault weapons. It bans high capacity magazines, outlaws sales of assault weapons and requires reports of mental illness. A provision was also added, the Webster provision, specifically to address the Christmas Eve shooting where two firefighters were killed while fighting a fire. Any assault like that shooting is now punishable by life without parole. But there is some pushback locally. McKeon County Sheriff Brad Mason says he doesn't agree with taking guns from law-abiding citizens. And he says even if he was directed to do so by the government, he wouldn't. We talked with a lot of other people in the Twin Tiers who all said they thought it was an infringement of the Second Amendment rights. Republican lawmakers have responded to this passing of the bill saying that it was bad, uh, good politics, but not necessarily the best thing for the state. And they think that is perhaps Governor Cuomo setting himself up for a 2016 presidential bid. In the WVTT Digital Newsroom, I'm Valerie Tysaner. Alexa, back to you. Thanks, Valerie. We have a list of those gun law provisions that we're going to show you right now. One of them is a ban on high-capacity magazines limiting clips to seven rounds and an immediate ban on all assault rifles or any rifle that has one military-style feature. Now, assault rifle owners will need to register their guns. Residents who legally own their guns will need to register them, register them every five years. And mental health professionals will need to report any patients they have that they consider a risk to law enforcement if those persons own a gun they will have to be removed from their possession. Also, universal background checks for all gun sales and ammunition sales. And the bill also includes the Webster provision, which makes shooting at first responders a felony punishable with life imprisonment. To join the conversation about gun control, you can visit our Facebook page, Facebook slash WVTT News. Jeff. Alexa, there was quite a conversation last night about gun control in McKean County when McKean County Sheriff Brad Mason addressed a group of the McKean County Tea Party at the Bradford Senior Center. Sheriff Mason says he doesn't agree with taking guns away from law-abiding citizens and that he wouldn't do that, even if he was told to do it by the federal government. Now Mason is seeking re-election as McKean County Sheriff. A preliminary hearing scheduled for today for accused murderer Gregory Eldred has been postponed. Eldred is charged with the murder of his ex-wife, Darlene Sittler. The hearing was postponed at the request of Eldred's attorney. Sittler was shot and killed while she played the organ at a church in Countersport. Police say church members wrestled the gunman to the ground until police arrived. Eldred was arrested and jailed. Eldred was a music teacher at Countersport Elementary School. There has been much ado about the flu epidemic as of late. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says 47 states are heavily affected. The Twin Tiers straddles two states hit especially hard. So we spoke with the Upper Allegheny Health System, the company that owns Bradford Regional Medical Center and Olean General Hospital. Dr. William Mills says the hospitals aren't turning people away, but they are prepared for a worst case scenario and an influx of patients. All the cases we've had are positive for flu A, but we're not testing everybody because interestingly there was a shortage of flu testing kits, kind of nationwide. Um, so we don't know how many actually folks had the flu. If you came in now with 
you know, fever, cough, aching, feeling miserable, we're going to think, mm, you probably have the flu, uh, and without testing it. So yes, our confirmed cases have been like 60, I think 68 was the number I saw yesterday. Um, we're tracking it every day. We've only had four admissions since December that are flu related, you know, in terms of it. So we're not getting a lot of people into the hospital. Now, Dr. Mills also tells us he's passionate about flu shots because he says those flu shots do a lot to prevent people from catching influenza. Only an officials have ruled the incident in which a woman fell to her death over the weekend as accidental. Police say they've ruled out foul play and the death of 25-year-old Brittany Malone. They say it's difficult to say what caused her to fall out of her third-story apartment window. In Olean, the future of the vacant Dow Tile plant is still uncertain. That plant, which closed December 12th, was the workplace for nearly 200 individuals. The city's assessor, Nancy Champlain, says the facility is valued at $1.94 million. The executive director of the Cataraugus Industrial Development Agency, Corey Wichter, said the property should go on the market. The IDA is prepared to help find a new owner and work with state authorities to put together an incentive package, such as low-cost electricity and tax breaks for potential buyers. A Bradford woman suffered minor injuries on Monday morning in a theft of prescription medications. Police say they don't believe this is a random act of violence. They are currently looking for a suspect. The woman received several stitches for a wound on her arm. In McKean County, Kane residents gave borough council members an earful at last night's borough council meeting. One Kane resident says the mayor and the council members aren't doing a good enough job at giving proper direction to the police department. Another called for the resignation of the mayor and council president. Most complaining felt the council has been ignoring borough laws, specifically code enforcement and snow removal issues. Bradford Township officials are reinstating their recycling program. The township had removed recycling dumpsters from the parking lot across from the township last month. Casella Waste System will empty their dumpsters twice a week as opposed to weekly, which should alleviate the overfilling and littering problems that were occurring previously. The so-called pizza bomber has lost her Supreme Court appeal and she'll stay in prison. Back in 2003, pizza delivery man Brian Wells was killed when a collar bomb locked around his neck exploded after police believe he was coerced into robbing a PNC bank branch in Erie, Pennsylvania. Marjorie Deal Armstrong was convicted of conspiracy and other charges for her involvement. She received a 30-year prison sentence in 2011. The Supreme Court justices today without comment turned aside claims from Deal Armstrong that she was not guilty and mentally incompetent to stand trial. She was convicted on three charges, including conspiracy to commit armed bank robbery back in November of 2010. Flames forced a Buffalo family of eight from their home last night. Fire officials say there is about $90,000 worth of damage to the house on Hoppin Street. That cause of that fire is still yet to be identified. Two businessmen making their final arguments to the Economic Development Committee for a new downtown stadium in Buffalo. Instead of spending nearly a quarter of a billion dollars to maintain Ralph Wilson Stadium, the two want to spend $1.4 billion to build a harbor complex, creating 15,000 jobs. It would be a 72,000-seat stadium, doubling as a convention center and complete with a retractable roof. That meeting started at noon today at the Erie County Legislative Chambers. An HIV scare has broken out in Buffalo due to the reuse of insulin pens. According to officials, more than 700 patients admitted to the Veterans Affairs Western New York healthcare system within the past two years may have been exposed to HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. Jeff. Coming up on Twin Tiers Evening News, our first look at weather. Also straight ahead, the global news update and how did the uh, stock market do this afternoon? We'll tell you next on News Channel 25 WVTT.